that, you know, people can go out to the theatre and actually see a community on stage. I mean, I don't know why I'm going on about this, given that I've got a solo show on in town right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's physical theatre in the empty space, but actually, it also, people will do it because it's only one person, yeah. you know? So anyway, we want that back. Of course we do. But the, the, the bit being said about the fact that, that we were doing shows that were successful or were not successful or, or short runs and all that, they certainly recognized when they had a winner. Right. It didn't just run for six weeks you know, or four weeks or whatever. There, there would have normally been two shows after Christmas in, in the way George normally ran. And obviously when there was a winner, there was a winner. Right? And, you know, they, they, I was going to say flogged the bejesus out of it, but that's not fair. Um, you know, we, we did national tours. We did a TV special of it. Right. So, so, you know, the, there is the success side of it, too. It wasn't, you know. There's also the fact that we took the theatre to the country. Now everybody sits home and expects to be entertained in their home. It's, it's a crime that we don't go out as Canadians and support our talent, our creativity. We haven't been able to give it a voice that is strong enough that we have gained our place in history, in the annals of history is, I guess, the best way to put it. We've become very uh, comfortable in our ability to critique others and to sit back and not participate, not give from the heart, not be organic in our uh, creativity, that we, we have lost the spirit and the voice that is so necessary to promote the talent and the artistry and the the, the sense of community that we have in this country. We've become a very diverse area and we have phenomenal opportunities to, to extract and to create something totally new and exciting and, and to put our stamp on it. But we can't do that if we don't have an audience and you can't afford to take the theater to the audience. So how, that's the dilemma for you guys coming up, is how do you create that audience? So they're going, we want more, we want more. We like Canada and what they have to say. We, we, we send all our actors away and then we make them famous and we claim them. Uh, we never claim them while they're here. We have phenomenal talent in this country and it's so difficult to get it recognized and supported. And when it is, conditions are attached to it. You've got to get rid of those conditions. That's what George did. He got rid of the conditions. It was his theater. It was his way. It was his way or the highway. <laughs> so go for it. I don't think that's necessarily changed, but I think we have to understand that the country has changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The country has changed radically. Toronto in 1974 was not the city it is today yeah. at all. You could not go, you could not possibly create, 10 last years was maybe our one and only instance of national theater. 
when, yeah. when a play could speak to the country and say, this is the country played back and people connect to it. Could you do that today with a cast of mostly white men and a few white women? No. 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 That's not the country we're talking to anymore. Right on. And I think what we find is that the country has not fragmented, but it is pluralized. It is diversified. You know that better than than we <laughs> Can I just here, say you know? also that the, um, the most exciting, some of the most ingenious and exciting and wonderful theater is actually happening, happening in independent groups yeah. and often highly inspired students that are coming out of school saying, I don't have time to waste with fearful artistic directors who are only or too scared to do my work. I'm going to create my own. And then lo and behold, you get an audience and who, who's on the phone? The artistic director saying, hey, come and do your show in my little <laughs> studio here or whatever. So that's the new, those those are the new rules, folks. Probably. And I actually think equity can work with us on those. Um, but that's, that's the new drive. I think a lot of the most exciting and creative stuff still has to be independently invented. Because uh, from, from, my, from, my, from, from my history after, <coughs> you know, actually before and after I worked at Toronto Workshop, I worked at Stratford. Right? And, you know, I, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I watch, I watch the, the festival with, with Four theaters, <clears throat> you know, we can go from a 300 seat to a 1800 seat, right? And we commission new works now. We have a new play development scene. But what the hell's wrong with Ten Lost Years? Like, why can't why can't we take plays that are successful in Canada and give them a, 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 an outlet where we we have the mechanism to bring in an audience, right? We have people traveling to see theater, and it now it seems to have to be new theater, it has to be something else. But nobody's going back and looking at the, you know, we've done a Tremblay, we did, you know, Les Valseurs and things like that before, but we've lost that. And we're, we're, we're not, I don't think, we as a Canadian festival are really doing an awful lot to help Canadian theater, to be honest. But it's also, it's also like uh, quite shameful, unless I've actually missed this in the, in the recent budget that came down, but those cuts that were made to the arts for travel, for touring and everything, those did not get put back in. No, no. No, we got more buildings. Yeah. No, as you say now, it's just a lot of things that where there was a decent go at something, but it was never ever a second production, it was yeah. never ever done, Absolutely. because the way the system is set up, uh, the theaters get brownie points for doing something new. They mm -hmm. don't get any brownie points for going back onto something and saying, hey, you know, that thing kind of went, got as far as second base last time be, it was done. Well, if we got well, some different that, people and do, 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 we'd take it all the way around the bases. But, but he, mean, he means, by brownie points, he means <laughs> more funding. I, I, have, I have to be an academic here. I have a historical footnote. Uh, first of all, the rights to 10 lost years were tied up in litigation and dispute for years. Okay, for, first of all, they really were. Um, it was, it would have been very difficult. And, and eventually, uh, TWP brokered a deal where uh, rights could be issued out. Um, uh, there was going to be a fund that was going to be shared and monitored by, Ac uh, by um, ACTRA. Oh, okay. And uh, that money disappeared when the company fell apart. But there was a, there was a legal problem that um, got Which made. is another problem. The other thing is, just as a historical <laughs> footnote for the sake of the theater museum, there was another production of Ten Lost Years, another adaptation of the Barry Broadfoot book, done by Northern Light Theater in Edmonton in 1977, directed by Scott Swan. It was atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but, because it wasn't, you know what it was? It was a bunch of people sitting around a fake campfire <laughs> telling stories and that's no, all it was no, my, my, and then singing authentic depression songs it was, it was my, it my was whole thing with, with, with the my whole thing with the festival or festivals in that we, we, you know, we, we, when, when a place like Spafford does does a season we have to put a schedule out and we have to run it. I mean if we've got a turkey we still have to drag the turkey right through the season we can't stop and start <laughs> so so it behooves us to find a piece that has already been done I think right in, r rather than, to me, in, w w the organization that, that I certainly recall over 30 years is not an organization that develops scripts particularly well, right? We, we, we don't, well, we don't have the wherewithal to workshop and workshop and workshop and workshop and workshop. I mean, it, there's, you know, we, we have a, a commercial aspect to it. But why, we, why we're not picking up, as I say, other Canadian pieces that have already been proven as, as, as a good piece and doing it, I don't know. But I think that would be a help. It's to too bad that, that companies like Stratford and Shaw 
uh, who have resident companies, resident groups of actors who are there for the whole summer, the whole season. It's too bad that we can't dedicate part of their time there as an ensemble exploring and creating one new Canadian production a year. That would be produced every the following years. year. Years. <laughs> no, something, something that would start one year and then be produced the next year. Well, in fact, I, in fact, if I have to uh, answer that because having <laughs> I'm about to enter my 23rd year at the Shaw Festival, <laughs> um, and 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 as as an aside, it was actually a production that Maya Ardo was directing that I came into the festival to replace an actor who was replacing an actor who had become ill. So it was because of Maya Ardo and um, and Christopher Newton that I ended up at the Shaw Festival. So I will I respond. <laughs> uh, by saying, for instance, uh, a production that my fiance Gabrielle Jones and I were in, among other people, um, a, play, a musical called Tristan was uh, uh, conceived, 